10 things to prepare ahead of Ofsted inspections. Make sure that your admin is up to date. The worst possible time to find out you're behind your admin is when you have an Ofsted inspector looking over your shoulder. So don't forget to update your records of fire alarm tests and evacuation rehearsals and the names in your policies so if you have a manager or a Senko and other important roles, make sure those names are current. As for dates on policies, if you have a review date and it's in the past, that's not going to look good, so make sure you update that too. And as for the central staff record, make sure all of your current staff and none of your previous staff are listed, and make sure you've updated their DBS and statutory training details as well. Don't forget to count your children! Make sure to have counted the children in your setting, because it really isn't unusual for an inspector to ask questions like How many children are on your roll? Or How many of them speak English as an additional language? While there's no expectation from Ofsted that you should know those numbers off the top of your head, it does give a better impression if you have up-to-date counts of these sorts of things somewhere, where you can readily find them when the inspector asks. Remind your team about first impressions. Remember when your mum used to say, first impressions are everything? Well, that's not strictly true. But nonetheless, make sure that you don't drop a clanger. So when a junior practitioner answers the door and there's an Ofsted inspector brandishing a very official looking badge, make sure they don't forget to sign them in and give them a visitor's badge. Because although this wouldn't be the end of the world, it's still not the best footing to get off on. Work out when you are due an inspection. Visits from Ofsted are not random. They happen for one of only two reasons. Either because a setting hasn't been inspected in the current inspection cycle, which is currently every six years, or because Ofsted has reason to be concerned that you are not complying with the EYFS, which is normally as the result of a complaint. So although it's certainly good practice to always be ready for an inspection, unless you have reason to expect one, there's no need to get especially het up or anxious about the recommencement of inspections as a lockdown eases. Work with your team on some self-reflection. Working with your team on self-reflection is vital, because a key part of Ofsted's approach is to verify that settings are aware of their own weaknesses without an inspector having to tell them. There's no such thing as a perfect early years provider, so every setting and those in leadership positions should be ready to give an honest appraisal of your strengths and weaknesses. Crucially, you should also be ready to explain the steps you're taking to improve in the areas that you've already identified as a weakness. Practice observing and being observed. All inspections will involve a degree of observation by the inspector, sitting or standing nearby and watching your staff practicing. In the last major update to their inspection approach, Ofsted introduced the idea of a joint observation, where the inspector will invite the setting manager or owner to observe some practice with them. Getting your team familiar with getting on with the job while being watched is easily done with practice, and it will be a good opportunity for you to get into the swing of it. Completing a joint observation is always voluntary, but it can form an important part of the self-reflection that we referenced previously. Engage with parents before an inspection. Ofsted will always speak to parents and carers when they attend your setting during an inspection, and though you can't influence parents, you can certainly solicit their feedback before an inspection happens. Make sure that your website is up to date. Before visiting a setting, an inspector will check to see if they have a website and will gather background information to prepare for their visit. So this is your first opportunity to make a great impression 
by ensuring your website is up to date. So make sure that staff lists are accurate, for example. Some settings go as far as preparing a special page for their website, which is labelled as being for an Ofsted inspector to review. This is certainly not required, but it can be a nice way to set out the background to your setting and a welcoming message to an inspector well in advance. Make sure that you are up to date with COVID guidelines. Ofsted has always had a responsibility to ensure that early years providers are providing a healthy and safe environment for young children. So you can be sure that inspections which are conducted in the coming weeks will still seek to validate that the correct precautions are being taken in relation to COVID. Of course, this is trickier than it first appears because many COVID related practices have a negative impact on children's experience and development. So it's best to check in regularly that any measures which you have in place in your setting are consistent with the current guidance and advice from the government. And you can always visit the TNL Premium Resource Store to get a COVID-19 policy for your setting. Remember to keep calm. For totally fair and obvious reasons, many people find the prospect of a visit from Ofsted intensely worrying. As a leader in your organisation, it's especially important that, even if you are anxious on the inside, you find ways to project a calm and confident approach to your team. Ultimately, an Ofsted inspection is designed to assess the quality of your early years provision, and we all know that stressed, anxious and distracted adults don't give their best for the children in their care. We've published a lot of resources to help you look after your own mental health, and you're welcome to check them out on TNL. But remember, it's just about continuing to do a good job. We hope that you found these 10 tips useful. For more on the early years and Ofsted inspections, go to www.thatnurserylife.com.